Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Java Interview Buddy. So in this video, I am going to cover some really good interview questions shared by one of our subscriber. His name is Arjun Verma, and Arjun recently gave an interview at Deloitte, and he has around six years of experience. So he works with tech stack like Java, Spring Boot, and Hibernate. So these questions are super useful if you are preparing for interviews at companies like TCS, Infosys, for any backend role, and now let's start with the video the first question was itself a stream api coding question the question was how do you find duplicate numbers from an integer list using java at stream now to answer this question i will share my screen and we will go to ide intellij and then we will solve this question we have a question i have written over here how do you find duplicate numbers from an integer list using java 8 stream so i have already created a list of numbers which are having some duplicates as well for example 2 is duplicate, 1 is also duplicate, 3 is also coming 3 times that means it, it is also duplicate. So to detect duplicates from a list of integer using Java at stream we have a two approaches. Now I will go to the first approach and this approach is basically using a collectors dot grouping by method. So I will say using collectors dot grouping by method. So first I will take this uh, list of integers and convert that into a stream and then I will use a collect method and inside that collect method I will use collectors dot grouping by and grouping by I will pass two things first is the element itself so I will say n lambda n and second thing is the occurrence of the element inside that stream so I will say collectors dot counting this counting method is basically tell the number of counting the element is coming in the list basically this right here will give us a map and the map has a key and value the key is the element itself and the value is number of counting or number of occurrence of that element from that list so from this map we will what we will do we will get a stream we will convert this map into a stream again using a entry set method then again we will use stream to convert that set into a stream and in the next line i will use filter method this filter method basically takes from this filter we are filtering only those whose count is more than one so for that i will use e dot get value greater than one so whose value is greater than one only we are keeping that and then final line we are printing the keys and now i will run this program so as you can see the output is one two three so one is also a duplicate in this list two is also a duplicate and three is also duplicate so this is our first approach now i will quickly go to our approach number two so before we jump to our next question i have a quick update for you our interview kit is live now and you can find it in the description of this video or any other video in the future so if you are preparing for the interviews don't ignore this kit this kit is prepared by myself and other industry experts as well and it is designed for the one purpose to crack any interview in java you see i have been in the industry for more than 11 years now and i have taken so many interviews like thousands of interviews in fact when i was in accenture i used to take three four interviews per day so i know how interviewers think how they proceed how they ask the questions what type of questions they ask all the scenarios i know so that's why i created this kit just for you and so if you follow this kit properly the chances are you can crack any interview all right so let's continue now i will quickly go to our approach number two which is using a set so as you know that the set has only unique values so first we will create a set here and this set will have integers i will call this set scene is equal to new hash set after that what i will do i will take that list and convert that list into a stream and then i will use a filter method so inside the filter method i will pass each element of that list i will do scene dot add so basically i am adding each element into the set and this add method will give true or false boolean value based on the it is able to add that number in the set or not so first time it will be able to add the number inside the set but second time when it try to add the number sent can't have duplicate values so it will not be able to add the element second time i will filter out only those values who are duplicate so what i will do i will say not seen dot add so whatever has not been added second time will be filtered out so basically this will pass only duplicate values from this filter method and then because some values are coming more than two times for example three is coming three times so what i will do i will use distinct method as well so distinct out the duplicate values and then finally i will say for each method and inside that for each method i will print 
those values and to, to distinguish these two approaches I will simply put a line here and finally I will run our program with the second approach as well so as as you can see that our second approach has the similar output as well the first one is having one two three and the second one is having two one three why it is having two one three let me know in the comment section why it is having unordered way because we are using set basically you can add the comment as well let's move to the next question now coming to our next question which is what is the purpose of the predicate interface in java so talking about predicate predicate is a functional interface that means it has only one single abstract method and basically it is used for the conditions so basically it takes one input and returns either true or false so mostly it is used for the filtering so whenever we are using filter method we pass a predicate and this makes our code clean and easy to read then the interviewer asks a follow-up question like can we combine predicates so yes we can combine predicates so there are methods called and or or so using those we can combine predicates coming to our next question which is how to analyze and debug memory leaks in java so we check if objects are growing in memory so we use tools like visual vm basically we analyze dump for unused objects we also check a garbage collection activity and look for the large retained memory so this will help us to detect memory leaks so basically there is a tool called v1 vm using that you can find the memory leaks and the interviewer can also ask like what causes memory leaks what usually causes memory leaks so you can say that static collection or unclosed resources suppose you open a db connection and you forgot to close it or you open any resource and you forgot to close it that may be reason of memory leak then coming to our next question which is what is the n plus one select problem in hibernate and how it can be prevented so basically if you mention hibernate in your project or in your resume the question will be from the hibernate if you don't mention it you don't need to worry about this question but if you mentioning hibernate in your project as well or in your resume as well you need to know that how to answer this question so basically first we need to understand that what is n plus one select problem now to understand n plus one imagine you have one parent entity and a collection of child entities like many child entities for example you have a department and department is a parent entity and there are employees employees are child child list so now what happens is first hibernate first fire one query to load all the departments then for each department it fires another query to load its employees so if you have n departments you get one query for departments and plus n queries for employees so total number of queries is n plus one so this is called the n plus one select problem basically it kills the performance right so when you use number of rows very big uh, it kills the performance and why does this happen you can say that uh, this usually happens because of the lazy loading combined with how we access the collection for example the relationship is one to many and there you are using fetch type is lazy so at first hibernate only loads departments and when we iterate and call get employees it has to go to the db again to fetch employees for that particular department if we repeat this inside a loop it causes a n plus one problem so lazy loading is not a bad thing but if you iterate it in inside a loop we hit this issue and how we can detect the n plus one problem in the real life you can say that you suddenly see too many small selects in a log you check the logs and you see multiple select or too many selects and the application became slow when list size is increasing so sql log shows how same query repeating multiple times with just a difference of id in the interview you can mention that i usually enable sql logs in the lower environment and look for the repeated or similar select queries while iterating over the collections now the question come how you can prevent the n plus one select problem so this is a very important part how you can prevent it so there are multiple techniques you can use first and foremost using the join either in hql or in jpql another way is using the entity graph so this is a basically jpa feature if you use entity graph n plus one select problem on cause then the third thing is using the batch feature like using the batch size annotation and 
loading all queries in a batch so this was from n plus one select problem and i hope you got the answer and you will be able to answer this question in the future in your next interview now we come to our next question which is if you scale a spring boot application for high traffic what strategies will you use now to answer this you can say that uh, we deploy multiple instances using load balancer and we enable caching as well then we add circuit breaker for safety and we use async processing for heavy task and you can explain each point in the detail as well for example how you create multiple instances how you use load balancer how you enabled the caching and how you use a circuit breaker for the safety and how you use async processing for the heavy task then we come to our next question which is what is synchronous and asynchronous communication so basically these are the two ways how microservices can communicate with each other and if i talk about synchronous way there are multiple like fang client web client or rest template and if i talk about asynchronous communication then we have to use a kafka or rabbit mq a messaging queue basically so the main difference is synchronous waits for the response asynchronous doesn't wait for the response you are getting the messages one by one and it will process whenever it gets the response so async work using the events and it is faster for the jobs but it needs good monitoring our next question is performance strategies for spring boot application we need to define performance strategies for spring boot application basically we need to tell that what strategies we can use to enhance the performance of our spring boot application so basically you can use multiple techniques of, to enhance the performance of your spring boot application you can use caching you can reduce api payload size you can enable compression and you can tune the thread pool size and also you can optimize the db queries uh, using maybe pagination so there are multiple techniques we already discussed in one of the earlier questions so same techniques you can use to enhance the performance of your application then comes a microservices question which is what is the service discovery so basically service discovery is a technique how the services find each other like you created a multiple microservices or multiple spring boot application but how they communicate with each other they can communicate with each other using rest template or any other uh, method but how they find each other so service discovery is the way the services find each other so there are multiple techniques which can be used like eureka console so generally eureka is used so in eureka uh, or if you are using aws then aws also provide a, a type of service discovery so we discussed eureka multiple times so this time i will tell you about aws like how aws discover uh, other services so basically aws uses aws cloud map so each service register itself with a cloud map and whenever any service needs that it will throw a query to find that service and from that query it will get that uh, which instances are alive uh, connection is active or not what version of the those instances are alive and based on that it will get the appropriate instance to call so that was all from this interview and i hope these questions and answers will help you and if you also want to speed up your interview preparation you can get the interview preparation kit from the description box thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video till then bye bye